Uh, my name is Gary L. McFadden. I was born in Sumter, South Carolina, New Year's Day, 1960. My childhood was in a place called Sumter, South Carolina, and Elliott, South Carolina. It's kind of a unique uh, thing. My mother did not drive until 1972. Um, after my grandfather died. So actually my father would take us to our grandmother's house to stay at my grandmother's um, from Monday through Friday because my mother was a school teacher and she did not drive. So instead of driving 17 miles a day or 34 miles uh, a day, we would actually go and stay with my grandmother Monday through Friday, come back home and move back in our home on Friday leave Sunday night to go back to my grandmother's house. So we were always moving, but only because of this transportation problem. So I grew up in Elliott, South Carolina, but was born in Sumter, South Carolina. So I spent my summers, first part of my summers in Sumter, South Carolina, and the rest of my summer in Elliott, South Carolina. So my migration to Charlotte came after high school. We looked at several colleges that I attend. I was going to attend uh, University of South Carolina play football and everything else, things fell through. I only went for a semester. And then uh, by happen chance, I came to Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, came to Johnson C. Smith University, loved it, fell in love with it here ever since. After college, um, you know, me and four guys uh, was just sitting around in a dorm, talking as kids do, and we decided to apply for Charlotte Police Department at that time. So myself and uh, three guys went down to the department, applied, and the department denied every one of us, all four of us. Um, at that point, I wasn't gonna go for it, so I went back and I talked to this gentleman, um, and we had this discussion. Um, it was a discussion would be a mild point where we had an argument, and he hired me. Um, the other three young men went on to be outstanding law enforcement uh, officers. Some went to federal jobs, another went to a local job, and he actually ended his career with Charlotte Police Department. So after being hired, you know, you go to the academy and you make it through the academy, and then all of a sudden they tell you where you're gonna work. I knew a little bit about Charlotte, but not a whole lot. So uh, my first three years on the street was off of West Boulevard. At that time, it was the toughest side of the city. You know, the Boulevard, you had Boulevard Homes, you had Dark Village, you had Southside Homes. You know, you had all these areas over there, and I didn't know anything about it, you know, because we stayed pretty much in Five Points. So we thought Five Points was tough off of Bates Ford Road. It was nothing like the Boulevard on West Boulevard. But after getting over there, it was like walking to a family. Uh, the people on West Boulevard to this day is like my family. They took care of me. Um, even though we had gangs, we had drug dealers and everything, we are still friends to that day. After getting over there, working with the family, I knew what I had to do. I had to be in the community every day and be that different officer that was different from every other officer. This opening came for burglary unit. The burglary unit was just people who uh, investigated commercial burglaries and theft. So I got into that unit, um, loved that unit, stayed for five years, and then all of a sudden um, they had a unit open for homicide and assault with a deadly weapon task force. So I got on the task force for a year. After that first year, then 125 people applied for homicide. They took me. When I became a homicide detective, my experience in homicide changed my whole life, my whole outlook. Um, dealing with families every day, seeing the tragedy. You know, we came during the time that it was the height of the crack epidemic. New Jack City just came out. Everything was rolling. Hip hop just was playing. And so you were in the street with colors and everything and gangs rolling. So then you had to be with it. You know, you had to know the slang. You had to know the terms. You couldn't just roll up on the block, get out, and say you're the police. You have to ease into the block. And I learned that from the guys on the street. You know, the streets taught me much more than any classroom could ever teach me. And but what I learned quickly is giving the streets just as much respect that I give everybody else. So giving the streets respect, they gave me respect. You know, pulling out a gun, I never had to shoot anybody, had never had to beat up anybody or anything like that. It was total respect. That taught me how to deal with people every day. And once, once I got into the homicide investigation part of dealing with the families, I knew I was home. So in 1992, um, got a call to Southside Home. Was very familiar with Southside Homes, been there 100 times working cases and working with people. Uh, this day was a little bit more unusual. When I arrived on the scene, I was told that a young lady was inside the home earlier and the officers knocked on the door because her sister wanted to get her attention. She had, ha she had not answered the phone for several days and she wanted to know where her niece and nephew was. So when we got there, we determined that this young lady had put both of her kids upstairs. She put one young um, child who was 
I guess, months old, inside of a crib. Then she put the other child in a bathtub. She closed the door to the room, and she closed the door to the bathroom, never came back. So you have to think about this. I went to a scene where a young lady starved both of her kids to death, or she attempted to starve both of her kids to death. One lived, the other one didn't. So at that point, I knew I was in an awkward situation because now I had to build a case to send a young lady to jail for starving her kids to death. In 2000, I think it was uh, 15, uh, Chief Monroe, our chief at the time, got his hair cut. And leaving the barbershop, he just texted me a message, said, look, his barber and some of his friends have an idea, a part of an idea, and they want to know if that idea would work. So the Chief Monroe said, hey, just call my barber. I called his barber, Gene Winchester. Gene says, I got this guy named Sean Corbett who got this great idea, can we talk and meet? I'm like, sure. So myself, Gene Winchester, Sean Corbett, and, uh, and Mr. Jacobs um, all met at Freshwater Restaurant. Freshwater had just started a restaurant on Graham Street. We ordered three orders of chicken wing and four glasses of iced tea, and we talked about this. Cop, no, it, we didn't have a name for it. So they put everything on my plate and said, you can get this, you can get the gems, you develop this, because these are barbers. So I didn't know what to do. So we sat and talked, and then we came up with the idea of bridging the gap between the community of color and law enforcement. So we set out and said, let's have a true, real platform of conversation. And that's how we started. So they gave me a task, and I'm sitting around in the office one day. Uh, the North Carolina Barbers Association wanted to call it Hands Up What Now? And I said, that wouldn't float for years later. So what I did is just kind of went through the office one day, and then I said, cops and barbers. And somebody said, well, where you got that from? I said, well, I grew up in rural South Carolina. You didn't have many toys, so you played cops and robbers. And so then I said, well, let's change it to cops and barbers. And we coined the name cops and barbers, patented the name, and then we started. And we had a great time. And we launched it February. We didn't know anything that we were doing. We had no idea. We launched it Super Bowl Sunday. And we didn't expect anybody to come, but 250 people came to the, our event in February. Lo and behold to us, we got a call from the White House that they wanted us to see, they wanted to see this concept. So imagine four months later, White House says, we need you there at the White House to present it to 200 law enforcement agencies across America. We didn't have a brochure, we didn't have, we didn't have a business card. Myself and Sean Corbett flew to Washington, D.C. We had a nice dinner with each other, we were nervous, we talked. We went to the White House and we presented this concept to 200 law enforcement agencies across America. So since um, Ronald Reagan, you know, I have the privilege of working presidential details when they arrive in Charlotte. So happily to say since President Reagan, I've worked every presidential detail when they came to Charlotte and I was assigned to the details, not specifically with the president, but the details that when the president comes to Charlotte. So since Ronald Reagan up until President Obama, I've been working on presidents and details since that time. In 2014, we created what they call the Dignitary Protection Unit here in Charlotte, and I was a part of that, where our law enforcement connects with Secret Service. So when Secret Service comes to Charlotte, they have a group of men, highly trained, just to deal with Dignitary Protection. So that's what's unique to a lot of cities, and a lot of cities are doing that now but we helped create it, um, the Dignitary Protection Unit here in Charlotte. And happy to say, my last detail was the podium of the president. Why I want to be sure from Charlotte Mecklenburg uh, County is because I'm passionate about my community. I'm passionate about the people. Um, I'm passionate about everybody. You know, whether you're a millionaire or you're just on the street as a homeless person. I have friends who are millionaires and I have friends that who are homeless and I want to bring those worlds together. And I can only do that by being sure for Mecklenburg County because that's the gap that I can bridge, that's the bridge that I need to bridge that gap. Passionate in the community every day, passionate about my work, so this will be only an extension of what I'm doing in the community every day now. So having this platform will give me the ability to help the people who are coming out of incarceration, but also help the people on the other side of the city to understand why they can bring their resources to help these same people. Bringing these worlds together will make a great city. As you can see, I have been working in law enforcement locally and nationally for 36 years. As your next Mecklenburg County Sheriff, all I want to do is extend my passion to this community on May 8, 2018. Gary McFadden, Mecklenburg County Sheriff, 2018.